wow queues are a pain. Even worse is missing your wow queue altogether. We can't control the wow login queue, but we can make sure that you never miss a queue again. Hey there, I'm Daintree Rogue. Welcome back to those of you already on our journey in the jungle. If this is your first video with us, come join us by clicking the subscribe button so that you don't miss any adventures in game or IRL. Today we're going to show you how to make your computer watch the WoW queue and alert you when you're ready to enter the world of Warcraft. In order to monitor the queue, we're going to need three things. Firstly, something to scan our screen and take a screenshot. Secondly, something to look at that screenshot and pull out the time remaining in our queue. And finally, something to notify us when the queue is almost ready. We'll walk through these steps and show you how it all works. Hang around until the end of the video to find out where you can download a script with everything you need to beat the queue. I'm a big believer in learning by doing, so we're going to jump right into the Python and we'll explain as we go. First, a bit of setup. You'll need to install Tesseract, the text recognition engine, before pip installing Pillow and PyTesseract, the Python packages. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Going back to our plan, step one was to take a screenshot. We can do this with Pill and Image Grab. Fortunately, I don't have a wow queue at the moment, so we'll have to use an image off disk for testing. So we can image.open our test screenshot, and we can see that we have a queue time of 199 minutes. Hooray! But we have a nice horizontal image with some digital text. This is a good start. It's not like we're trying to read a handwritten scribbled note. So while we can read this pretty easily, there's a few reasons why it's not so good for the computer. Um, firstly, for around the outside we've got a whole bunch of text that's just not relevant to what we want to know. Secondly, there's a whole bunch of textures and gradients that can be confusing to the algorithm. And finally, uh, if we look closely at, uh, at the text in the middle, we can see that there's a shadow. This can also cause problems. There are a few things that we can do to tidy up this image. So we can crop to just the center area to focus on the text that we're really interested in. We can turn the contrast up to remove some of those gradients and get rid of that text shadow. And finally, we can remove all color, which leaves us with a clean black and white image, which is exactly what we need to achieve the best results. Now let's see if we can get Python to recognize this text. We'll use PyTesseract to extract the data from our image. The image to data function takes an image, analyzes it, and returns the text. It also gives us the location of the image, as well as the confidence, which is how sure Python is about that bit of text. Here we're looking at what the computer actually sees. The boxes are color coded by the confidence level. We can see that the boxes in red are a bit of a mess, while the stuff in green is pretty good. So we'll just cut it down to the text that has high confidence in green, and that way we won't get any of the junk. We can use a list comprehension to filter the text based on the confidence level and then join that filtered text back together into a single string. And there we, you can see we have a clean string with the time in queue. Excellent. The last piece of the puzzle is to extract the time remaining as a number. We can use something called regex to extract only the digits after the word time. And once we have those digits, we can convert them to a Python integer. So running that, we can see that we have uh, 199 as a number. So what now? Well we can take all of the above steps and wrap them into a single function that takes in an image and gives us back the time remaining as a number. So we'll pass in a fresh image and see what happens. And perfect, we have 199 as a number. Great. Today we're focused on the wow queue, but you could use this approach for almost anything. If you've got any ideas, let us know in the comments. All right, so we almost never have to worry about a queue again. We still need to make some sort of alert though. So the easiest alert to set up is an alarm. This one is so simple, I love it. So switching over to the Python console, you can simply type print character seven. Awesome, that is so cool. All right, or we can send ourselves an email notification. There are so many tutorials out there, seriously, just type Python email into Google and like even Google knows how to do it. Uh, so I'll just briefly touch on the email setup. 
Okay, so I will talk about this line. You should never save your credentials in the same file that you require them, especially if you're pushing them to a remote repository. At the very least, you should have those credentials stored in a separate file with some basic encryption on it so that, you know, at least if someone else opens it, it's not human readable. I have my details saved in a Python package, which I've called my info. Then when I need my email details, I can import Outlook, and that is a class which has the attributes username and password. So wherever I need username or password, I can simply type in outlook.username and outlook.password. Obviously, you'll need to replace this for in your script with your details. Just be very careful about saving that file with your credentials in them. Pressing on. We'll need to set up the SMTP server details. Um, this will depend on your email account. I'm obviously using Outlook here. And we set up the message, pretty straightforward, and then we can send a message. And that will send an email that I'll receive in my inbox shortly. And there we can see a confirmation of that message. Now we can wrap up all those alerts into a single function. Here we've included a third alert called play song, which will play a song off disk. If you'd like to know more information, you can find it on daintryrogue.com. So if we go ahead and run this function, we can see that we've successfully played the very annoying Alarm 01 uh, built in with Windows. Thanks, Microsoft. Okay, so bringing everything together, here is a function that takes a screenshot every five seconds, extracts the time remaining in the queue using the get time and queue function that we created earlier, then, if their number of minutes left is below 2, we, can, we use the send alert function to notify us. We've also added a line here. The wow queue can, can jump around quite a bit, so we don't want to notify us unless we've seen the time remaining a number of times, in this case, three times. And that's it. To run this on your computer, download the full script from the links below. Run the Python script, and then put the WoW login queue up on your screen with Python in the background. Python will take a screenshot every now and again, process it, and then notify you when your queue is ready. That's programming to win. I hope you enjoyed beating the WoW queue with us. Let us know how you go in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our next video. If you'd like to know more about our setup or the tools we've used today, you can find out more over at daintreerogue.com. This is Daintree Rogue, gone rogue. See you next week.